Number one of them is mindfulness. In the first place, we must ask ourselves, as Buddha taught us, why, why we meditate? Why we practice mindfulness? There are five purposes. Number one is for the purification of beings. That is a very important factor. Purification of beings means purification of our mind. <coughs> because we know when the mind is impure, with the impure state of mind, <coughs> what we do, what we say, what we think, can produce harmful, painful results that follow us like the cart that follows the hoofs of the ox that pulls the cart. When the mind is impure, with that impure state of mind, whatever we do or say or think, we'll have, we'll have painful results. If we do things with a pure state of mind, think and speak, the results follow us like our own shadow. This is what Buddha mentioned in the Dhammapada. First meaning of the first two steps are. Therefore, we have to practice mindfulness or meditation in order to purify our mind. The second purpose is Soka Paridhavana Samati Kama to overcome sorrow and grief. In order to overcome sorrow and grief, you have to meditate. Friends, ask yourself, why do sorrow? Anytime, why you have sorrow? What is the cause of sorrow? Because of the greed. Greed, attachment, clinging, craving, ya yam tanna kono bhavita, nandi rāda sahalata, tatra tatra vinandi. Buddha mentioned the first discourse. Our sorrow arises from greed, which causes delight here. Delight there, and attached to this, attached to that, and that causes sorrow, lamentation. To overcome pain and grief, dukkha dhomanas, pain and grief, we must take. When you meditate Nyaya Sadhigamaya, in order to put ourselves on the right path, we meditate. As long as we follow wrong path, we have painful results. We meditate to put ourselves on the right track 
we have gone off the track. Do that. And therefore we have pain and suffering. Nibbana Sasaki Vidyar. We practice meditation to realize Nibbana. All other benefits are peripheral. They are not important. And for these five purposes we meditate. Therefore, Buddha mentioned, when you practice mindfulness of breathing, we practice four foundations of mindfulness. We practice mindfulness of breathing. When you practice mindfulness of breathing, we practice mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feelings, mindfulness of the mind, and mindfulness of mind objects. All these four foundations of mindfulness we practice when we practice one uh, object, use one object, that is mindfulness of creating. How does that happen? <coughs> mindfulness of the body, we begin with mindfulness of breathing. We mentioned four mindfulness of breathing is divided into four tetras. We just mentioned at the beginning the first tetra. When we practice the mindfulness of breathing, we practice four tetras. When we practice them, we practice seven factors of enlightenment, four types. When we practice mindfulness of breathing, we practice seven factors of enlightenment. When we practice mindfulness of feeling, we practice seven factors of enlightenment. When we practice mindfulness of the mind, we practice seven factors of enlightenment. When we practice mindfulness of the mind, <coughs> Dharma, mindfulness of Dharma, we practice seven factors of enlightenment. So seven factors of enlightenment we can practice four times when we practice mindfulness of breathing. But if we learn how to practice mindfulness of the body and practice certain cultures of enlightenment, that is enough. Others are just pollution. Now, mindfulness of the body, we must understand that we practice them not as a, a past time, just for a sort of a way of fashion to just to relax. Mindfulness of mindfulness practice is a very lofty practice. Mindfulness of the body itself, if you practice diligently, 
is enough to have all the factors of enlightenment. Let me begin with the beginning of mindfulness of the body. And we have to take it very hard, take into heart very seriously and put into practice. Reading, discussing, writing, listening to mindfulness of mindfulness practice is not enough. We have to put it into practice. Be mindful of the body and see mindfulness of the body exactly as it is. We always hear the phrase or sentence yata bhuta jnana darshan that is seeing things as they really are. Seeing things as they really are. What does it mean? Seeing things as they really are. We see things. How can we see things as they really are? Normally when we look at something, for instance we see this building, we all see the building. But is it the way, is it how we see it really is? We look at each other, look at our own body. Can we see this body as it really is? We see superficially our head, hair, body, hair, nail, teeth and skin. Those are things we see superficially. Is that all of us? No. There are much more things inside to see. But can we see them? Can any of us see inside? No. But seeing them inside as they are is all seeing things as they really are. Here things means remember yata bhuta jnana seeing things as they really are. What are the things? Body, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. What we call aggregates. Even then, even if we enumerate the five, put them, put them in order like this, we don't see them as they are. So Buddha said, Kaya Kaya Prasidhi See the body as it is. See the body as body, as it is. This body is always changing. This body is always changing. Can you see that? When I look at you, I look at you ten years ago, you look a little different. 
from now. But I saw you yesterday and see today. I don't see very much difference in you. Similarly, when you saw me yesterday, when you came here and see me today, you don't see very much difference in me. But friends, you have changed. I have changed from yesterday to today. We don't see that. We see this when we see we have to see this with Vishnu. With Vishnu. Vishnu comes from mindfulness. So the see the body as body as it is with mindfulness or with wisdom. And the phrases of the three phrases are used, words are used in Quran, which, which full of meanings. Uh, Buddha said, when you see the body as it is, with open eyes you cannot see the body as it is. You see only superficial appearance. You have to close your eyes and look at you introspectively. That means look at your mind. Look at the mind. With arm, with effort to penetrate into your own life, penetrate into your own mind. Overcoming Attachment and rejection, clinging and rejection. Don't cling to the body or don't reject the body. See the body as it is. When we do this, we can see ourselves normally when we look at ourselves, we look at ourselves with some emotions. Without any emotional attachment or rejection, impartially we must, we must learn to look at ourselves impartially. That is not very easy to look at ourselves impartially. <coughs> and Buddha repeatedly mentioned uh, in this discourse see the rising of body and falling of the body and rising and falling of the body. That is, Samudra Dhammana Pasiva Karasmi Vyarati, Vaya Dhammana Pasiva Karasmi Vyarati, Samudra Vaya Dhammana Pasiva Karasmi Vyarati. These three sentences Buddha repeated many times, six times in the, in the mindfulness of the body, six times. When we breathe in and out, at the end of the section, Buddha said, Samudra Dhamma Prasiva Kaashmi Vyarati, 
Why the man was given first to be ready? Some day when the man was given first to be ready. That means, live seeing rise in the body, seeing, uh, uh, seeing uh, the phone in the body, and seeing rising and falling the body. That means, with regard to the breath, breath is a, as I mentioned the body, seeing it rising, seeing it falling, and seeing it rising and falling. When you listen to these three sentences, you may wonder why did the Buddha say seeing rising and seeing falling and then he rise and say rising and falling. What does it mean? That is, this is the nature of Sankara. Sankara has, Sankara means conditional. Sankatam api Sankara utilita Sankara. That which is already conditionally coming into existence is reconditioning. What is conditionally, what is arisen due to causes and conditions is reconditioned. It's called Sankara. Reconditioned. So, these conditions, preconditioning has three characteristics. That is, rising, falling, and ordering. Put the body sun. तीन मार्ग में करे संकर संकता से संकता लगता है ना तो वहाँ की तीन उपादो पंजाये की उपायों पंजाये की तीसरा से अन्य तत्व पंजाये की That means rising is visible, falling is visible, and what we call existence, it is ordering is possible. Rising, ordering, and ceasing. For instance, something rises like this. Just imagine, right? Here, and it comes to the field and goes like this. And then, in the smaller circle coming to existence, does not stop. That means each moment has three minor moments. Rising moment, feet moment, and falling moment. These three moments, when we are mindful, we can see these three moments, three minor moments. Only then can we understand that we are unable to hold on to anything because we are always in a state of flux. Things are always in a state of flux, changing, moving, 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 moving. In order to show this, Buddha said, seeing rising, seeing falling, and seeing rising and falling. The minor moment are rising, falling, rising, falling, rising. And therefore, in Vipassana or Sati, when we develop sati, mindfulness, we have to be very clear and develop our awareness 
to see this more subtle changes taking place in us. And that is universal. And therefore Buddha said that Live seeing the body as it is internally, see the body as it is externally, see the body as it is internally and externally. That means, one time we have to be mindful of our own changes. That is the easiest thing, closest to our heart, that we can see things, see changing changes taking place in us. And then, Inferentially, we are like that, yes, others also can accept it like this. Right. Then, that is another confusing statement that people who are not mindful don't understand that. Right? When you are mindful, you see your own internal changes and see the changes of others intellectually, you know, going to information, then see rising, see the body internally, see the body externally, then see the body internally externally. Again, internally and externally. How can that happen? It is, you first know that you are changing, then you know that others are changing. Then you know that why you are changing, they are changing. <laughs> that why you are changing, they are changing. That is why it is said, see the body internally, see the body externally, and see the body internally and externally. Why you are changing, they are changing. That means you, we don't take turn to change. That means let me finish changing myself and then you change. It doesn't happen either. While I am changing, you are changing. While you are changing, I am changing. We all are changing. Everything in the universe, everything in the universe is changing while I am changing. See the Buddha's wisdom. When we are mindful, we must understand the mind, the, 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 this intricate, very subtle, deep, profound changes taking place everywhere, all the time. There or right, here or there. And therefore, we, we take one thing and see that thing very completely, perfectly, then we can see everything else exactly like that particular thing. And therefore, uh, when we practice mindfulness, it is not something uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, certain outside external objects. It is a way of developing our awareness to see something beyond our superficiality. 
Dio non ha sottoscelto. 